Hello crazy fam, Mr. Crazy Barker here again today and today we will be talking about a special edition SV1000 V-Twin. Right, some things you got to know about SV is for the 2005 model, Suzuki le uh, launched a, a special edition, which is this colour, which is in the Juxo colours and the reason they did it was because they were celebrating 20 years of the Juxer, the K5, so they decided to paint the SV like the Juxer. But as always, if it's a special edition, it's not left standard with Suzuki. The standard edition, uh, the normal, you know, the norm, you know, the plain Jane SV, that only produced 118 brake horsepower from what I could research myself. But this K5 model and since it's a special edition, it produces 123.5 brake horsepower. They retuned the engine just because it's a special edition, so they can get more power out of it. Also, it is a 996cc engine that's in this bike. 90 degree V-twin, 4 valve per cylinder. It's liquid cooled, quite good. And it's also chain driven, this bike. It has a dual throttle valve injection system on the bike, which is really nice and beautiful paint as well. The front tyre, if anyone wants to know the sizes of them, is 120 by 70 on a 17 inch rim. The rear tyre is 180 by 55 on a 17 inch rim. The length of the bike is, it's a pretty long bike, it is 83 inches long and the width is 31.8 inches and the height from the bottom to the seat is 46 inches. In the dry the bike weighs 185. The bike has a top speed of 142.7 miles an hour, it's a 17 litre tank it gets really good mileage for a V twin actually. And in the quarter mile it will do eleven seconds at the hundred and twenty two miles an hour. Some of the other things about the SV what you need to know is it's a lot faster than the special edition. They made the throttle response the throttle response a lot, a lot more like in your face kind of sort of thing. You pull back that that throttle and if you're not respecting it then it's an early grade for you, mate. But as I said, it's a beautiful colour, the nice blue Suzuki in it, with a nice pearl white, nice pearl white. The bike did originally come with black wheels on it though, but someone has decided to repaint them white. I don't know if that's just because they want to split the colours a wee bit more or that, but it doesn't bother me. The white actually does look quite good with the tyres. This bike has done 11,300 miles I think on it. And I bought it not that long ago, as you probably, if you've watched my channel, you'll find out I did a big reveal on this bike. I thought I'd do a review on it since now. But with this coronavirus, we kind of go out and about right now, so I can't tell you how it rides. Well, I can only tell you, I've only been out on it once, so. But it rides alright. But, you know, that's just around cul-de-sac and all that, but. It is a beautiful bike for this age. It did pretty much nothing, no damage done to it. The reason that brought me to an SV is the fact that my father he actually owned a TLR and I always wanted a TLR and I've looked at TLRs and looked at prices from like 2000 you know like freaking 3000 people are wanting stupid money for the TLRs and I've gone and looked at a couple you know they've been really really bad rotten kind of sort of thing so I kind of wondered if there was another bike and then this came up and I didn't actually didn't know this was actually originally a TLR engine that was in it, but the fact that the standard editions of the SVs, they were actually detuned engines, and which was really, really good. Uh, well, I decided just to go for the 1000 because why not? I had the money and the bike was available and I just want the 1000. In my, prior, in my uh, experience, I just wanted a bigger bike. Another thing which is actually quite noticeable and how you actually know if you do have a special edition is obviously the paintwork. 
and all the special editions actually had a black frame all through it and black wheels as I said mine were repainted and they were fully fared as well not half fared like the normal SVs the normal SVs had a silver a silver frame plus special editions as I said it's got black also a double throttle injection a nice and beautiful bike for its age non-standard cams on it as well as if you can see them and let's see and also let's talk about why the SV never the SV1000 never took off it's just like any other bike they produced the SV650 and a lot of people preferred the 650 because it wasn't as violent when you hit the throttle whilst the SV1000 was actually like an animal you had to try and tame it it was a runaway kind of sort of thing whilst this was a lot more vicious with the throttle whilst the well it's kind of a hit or a miss a lot of people on reddit and forums and all that say oh the 650 is a much more superior bike because it's more controllable for newcomers fair dudes but if you're a newcomer to bikes Surely to Christ, you shouldn't jump on a freaking thousand straight away and drive off. Well, that's my argument. Plus, this is all... I know, it's a bit it's a bit stupid how people can be on it, but this is my opinion. I don't really care what people say about it, if I'm being honest, but... If you want to buy a bigger bike, you buy a bigger bike because it's more powerful. Technically. You don't buy a 650 and, oh, I'm going to be up to a thousand. Oh, I don't like it because it's too powerful and uncontrollable. Well, at the end of the day, it's your fault for thinking, oh yeah, I can handle a thousand. Yes, the bike is a lot more snappier, but it's a V-twin. What do you suspect from a bloody V-twin? It's not a straightforward bloody Honda CBR kind of sort of thing. This thing will throw you off if you're being bad to it. You got, as I say, and what I've been taught by previous past, you've got to respect every single bike you have. Don't rip the tits off of it. Don't be a bloody idiot on the road, because you seem to forget it's not just yourself that you're affecting; it's everyone else. And I'm just saying this because I'm a quite young guy, and uh, I'm, I wouldn't say new to bikes. I've been driving bikes all my life, but. You gotta think if you're older or younger, you driving like a twat ends up putting everyone's insurance up, which is stupid, in my personal opinion. And another thing as well with the SV is it's got a digital miles per hour on the clock. Let's just see that. If I can get the key into the hole, so unprepared. There we go. Let's see as you say it. It's got the check engine the oil light but that goes out after you start the bike. See it's got a nice little digital read out there. And it's actually what was it? The mile it's not actually uh when you drive the thing, with normal old bikes, you see it's got this wee little, uh, I'll show you on another bike. This one here, this is a pan-European Asher 1000. As you see this cable here, that's for the speedo mechanism that's in there, which tells you, obviously, on your dash, obviously, how fast you're going and all that. But with the SV and more modern bikes, it's actually electrically done. Which is good or bad, I don't really know <laughs> myself. But let's talk about some bad points of this SV. As I said, it is a very clean bike, but there is good parts and bad parts to it. And let's talk about some of the bad parts of the bike. There is a wee bit of rust on this. It is a 2005 model, but for something that's literally been 15 years, not done that much mileage, I really would like to get this sorted out. Like peel the spark and I'll sand it down, get all the rust off and redo it. Maybe maybe make a video out of it. May not, depends on how many likes this gets. And let's talk about these wheels. 
As I said, there's nothing wrong with the wheels. I don't mind the wheels, but what I do mind is some idiot took a spray can to these rovers and resprayed them. Which I know some people might like, some people might not. I don't. It just looks tacky. So I might just uh, decide to either try and peel these back or order a new new disc pads for it. But anyway, that's very good. Hello crazy fam, something must have gone wrong with the card and so I'll just start off from where I went. Right, as I said, I was talking about the brake discs, I don't like how someone did that, so I'll try and get that off in one video for you. But let's talk about more bad points to this bike. Right, another bad point that I noticed with this bike when buying it is, is this has the hugger, like the custom hugger on it. And I noticed it's not really been well put on, as you see there. I don't know if that's just because the cable is behind there or pushing it down. But there, it does have a wee little couple of dings on the tank. Right there, wee little ding. Nothing a wee little sticker kind of fix. And then, these are a wee bit scratched, but it's nothing that I can just buy new parts for, really. We've got a wee bit out of here as well. But it has been a fairly well looked after bike. Front pointy end and the cool little air and ducks up into there. Ooh, we can see sunlight through there. As I said, someone's gonna respray these. Horrible because look, they're bloody chipping off. Another thing is, I've noticed what's wrong with the bike is, I don't know if you guys will see, but up in here, you might up in there, kind of sort of way. It started to start to get a wee bit of surface rust, so I've been treating that, and it's been okay so far. It was not returned, so uh, as well. And what else I'll probably show you guys as well is I may buy a new one of these. You probably don't see it on the camera, but the paint's peeled away from here, so I may as well buy a new one of those as well. I know I can talk forever in a day about this bike. How much I like it and how much I don't. How much like bad stuff is on it. But there's not really that much bad stuff. I can't even complain about it. It's a beautiful bike and what I paid for it I thought I got a bargain out of. Of course, non-standard cans. If you watch some of my other videos you'll hear the bike firing up. It's a really nice loud bike. But anyway guys, that's the crazy biker here. And please like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later and please stay safe with this coronavirus. See ya!